the rule out aspect of uh, cancer with the genetic testing uh, has gotten pretty good to the point that uh, if you don't find a high risk mutation and it appears that uh, it's just atypical but still probably benign, then that person's probably still a reasonable RFA candidate. Excellent. I'm so happy to hear more doctors are saying that they trust the genetic testing results. I'm glad to hear that now that those those patients are potentially still a candidate. Right. Well, when the genetic testing first came out, uh, which is 2010, the first commercial ones, uh, there were a few others sort of out there, which I, I'm not sure how reliable they were. Uh, they were somewhat useful prior to 2010, but the ones that I actually have gotten very comfortable with have been around uh, for over 10 years now, and they've been refined. And I, I um, again, just through experience, I've found they're, they are pretty good. Uh, they, they really are good. And again, no test is perfect, but um, I think that uh, we've gotten to the point where a negative genetic test or not finding a high risk mutation for cancer uh, is just as good as a, in terms of reassuring the patient that it's benign uh, mm -hmm. as getting a tissue diagnosis that it's benign. Mm -hmm. Because even tissue diagnosis is occasionally wrong. Again, no test is perfect, but you know, then you're getting down to like, well, we got 98% certainty. This is benign. So, you know, it's reasonable to do something that's less aggressive, less invasive to try and deal with it.